this the first time you wore a suit during the pandemic or do you wear this every single day, even when you're at home? Well, if, if you count from the waist up, absolutely it's the first time I've actually worn a suit. <laughs> Um, yes, and it's probably the most dressed up I've been all year. Definitely the most dressed up I've been since March, that's for sure. And the top button was a little bit tighter than it was, I feel, a while ago. I, I'll be honest, I worked hard to get this top button up. We created this new award, Agency of the Year, which you, gave and Frank are nominated for through Reach Agency. And I want to say congratulations. Well, thank you, man. Thank you. We're, we're very, very excited about this honor just to be nominated. Um, if I were going to the streamies, this would have been probably my fifth one, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been a fan for a long time. Um, and I think we've always, we've had campaigns before when you, as you've grown sort of the, the brand uh, participation, um, you know, we've, we've gone for it every shot we've gotten. So for you guys to open up a, you know, agency of the year award and, and to be included the first year you've done it has been just amazing. Yeah. And I, I just say to Gabe's point too, it's, you guys are, are the pinnacle of, you know, this, this space and we're an agency that plays in this and to be recognized by the streamies is, incredible incredible for an agency like ours and the other thing too is it really gave and i built this up over nine years the last eight and a half years and um it validates the culture the people we've brought on uh all the wonderful work that happens not just gabe and i but behind us um and we're so excited for them um and so proud to you know be be honored with an incredible list that that we all love looking at their work it inspires us whether it be a Portal A or a Vayner, it, it pushes us to do better work and to be up there with them is great and part of the Streamies. That, that's great to hear. Um, do, do you think that the Streamies brand awards, like there's there's obviously a lot of extremely prestigious um, advertising uh, uh, awards like um, Can Lions and the Clios. Uh, how do you think that the Streamies awards uh, are, are different than the, those major awards? I personally rather stream me than a Cannes Lion, although I do think you guys should have parties on yachts with Rosé, but, um, you know, it, look, getting a streamy means you know what you're doing. It's an industry insider event. It actually has credibility. You know, so many people have gotten Cannes Lions. There are full campaigns to get those. And, it, you know, it, getting a streamy actually means something, and it means something for the work that's core to what we do. Um, which is being in the social video and creator space. I could say that better. It's so true. Especially there's the art, Drew. There's definitely something particular. It's a particular skill set in order to be able to create campaigns that resonate with um, audiences online, on YouTube, on all the social platforms. And best of class right here, Reach Agency. Can you um, tell us a little bit about some of the campaigns you did over the past year that you were especially proud of? Yeah, um, well, it's like saying which one of your kids uh, you like more. <laughs> we, you know, there's so many we, we did. Um, well, there's an obvious favorite. Got yeah, it. Obvious, of course. Uh, uh, you know, most recently we're doing a, a ton of stuff with Hot Pockets um, and Shroud, who is one of your nominees. Um, it's it's a campaign called Pockets for Bits, which is out there where you can actually go buy Hot Pockets and get Twitch Bits and, and use that to support your favorite streamer. So we're particularly proud of that because it helps brands enable other streamers. Um, you know, we just had a globally trending uh, video with the Merrill twins on Nordstrom's for their holiday sale. Um, and then we've had like these longtime partnerships with people like Chris and Two Hype and, and DiGiorno um, and, and also help bring some really big brands into the creator space. Like uh, we did a big partnership with Hin Valley Ranch and, you know, Andrew Rea from Binging with Babish. Um, mm. Not that we had to help convince people to like Ranch more, but we, we might have uh, helped them think about it in a different way. Do you think that, okay, we're in a connected world now, yeah. working with creators, shouldn't it be as easy as just reaching out to them directly? Why, why can't brands just reach out to a creator directly and, uh, and sort of cut out the middleman agency? Uh, why is that not a good idea? Well, look, they can. And, 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 uh, Look, Frank and I worked at a talent agency before we started this agency. You know, it's it's not about access anymore. It's like what you do with it, right? You know, anybody can call anybody. It's about the idea. It's about 
um, being able to work with a different type of creator. Um, and it's really about balancing both the creator priorities and brand priorities. And, and there's an art to that. And that's, that's where we focus in on. And um, we need to make sure that it's something that's awesome for an audience, but also something that performs well for the brand. So do you think that the pandemic has uh, changed the way that you do business or how has it affected your business? Um, we've been extremely fortunate, um, and especially not only with our clients, um, but also the fact that we do work with so many creators and, and we were able to help, um, brands that, you know, had to rethink how they create content and tell their own stories, um, and, and really help them work with creators who could still do that during the time of pandemic. Um, so look, we help brands, um, and we help creators work with brands in different ways, um, it's, it's been really great for us. And, and I think it's done nothing more than um, sort of increase the value or the role creators play for brands. Frank, what's the, what's the future hold 2021? Uh, some predictions. Do you have any ideas of what advertising is going to look like, either influencer campaigns or brands becoming influencers in of themselves? Like uh, what's the, what should we be on the lookout for? Oh, wow. Um, well, I, you know, hopefully a tremendous amount of growth for reach. Uh, and this space overall, I think people are really figuring this out. I think what is interesting has been our approach over time with influencer uh, influencers is there's a lot of technologies out there trying to connect brands to influencers. And we think it's still very much a human touch to come up with that strategy to find the influencer, uh, the right ones that fit that brand, and then to tell that story in the right way. And, and it's hard to let technology do that. It, it can get better from a reporting standpoint, but I do believe that human touch is what's going to kind of make a difference in these brands succeeding in this space and not in the future. But I do suspect the space is just gonna to continue to grow. Uh, traditional ways of uh, advertising are, are losing their luster. As we all know, it's reported every year. COVID has been an acceleration of some of this. Not, uh, not just kind of a change, but an acceleration to that. And I think, uh, you know, influencers are, are peers, friends of, you know, ma many people, to many people, uh, they're a trusted voice uh, and they can be an excellent way for brands to connect uh, to, to audiences um, in a very authentic way when done right. Do you feel that like as this industry continues to evolve, there's going to be more specialization and you're going to see um, more distinct identities between talent, uh, creative distribution, or is it still like you're still trying to find that, uh, you know, that mega influencer that can do it all? Or are you now, is it, is it now more of a team effort going forward? I think it is going towards specialization. So I think influencers, at the beginning, we're specialization. You want to reach a music crowd, you work with a music influencer. You want to work, reach a food crowd, you work with a food uh, creator. Um, but with like media technology, being able to target different types of groups and amplify what an influencer's reach can be, I think it, it means so much more. And, and brands are finally losing that like muscle memory of, hey, I need one omni message and I need to just blast that out to everybody and, and repeat it 50 times. And they're realizing the value and having those personalized messages to those personalized audiences. And I think fortunately for us, like uh, influencers were sort of a training wheels for a lot of brands to do that. And, um, and because of, they become that tip of the spear and, and they can continue being able to connect with audiences in the right way. And um, I think that's good for audiences too, because audiences don't want to hear messages that they're not interested in. So are brands themselves like becoming influencers in, in terms of, the brands themselves are trying are adopting personalities to cut through the noise and resonate with uh, their audiences just almost directly, you know, without having to necessarily leverage or work with a recognizable creator, but actually as a brand sort of become a, a friend, so to speak, to the to the audiences they're they're marketing to. Yeah, I think um, brands, look, it depends on the brand brands. And, and look, Frank and I used to work at William Morris before we did this. And you know, whether it was the Geico man or, you know, a lot of, a lot of personalities in, in insurance, but um, certain brands lend themselves to wanting to be more influenced. What I think, what I think uh, is interesting is that brands have woken up and they've realized, um, you know, 
there's a greater opportunity to partner with influencers to be an influence themselves. So look at what McDonald's did with Travis Scott. You know, I think, and you guys have a great nod to it in the fact that um, you're, you have a whole category based off of um, creator brands. And so I think the vision as Frank and I see it is um, really uh, in bridging that gap between, you know, major brands we all love and creators we all love is is how can they work together to create more than just videos and products we all love and, and possibly at a bigger, better scale than, than a creator can do on their own. Um, and maybe, you know, with a more, little bit more insight and a, a little bit more creative direction um, than a big brand can do. So, um, you know, that, that's really where we live and, and, and that's where we'd love to see an evolution over time. Yeah, I, I would say our success over the years has been the early part of the process and really helping the brand find its voice, develop a strategy and, and not just say, hey, let's do 10 deals with influencers. These, these seem great, but really saying what's your voice there? What would work? What's the creative? What's, what, what's the format that works well with this? And understanding each brand um, has its kind of as much as it can do, you know, some brands are just not going to be influencers, you know, and, and be that cool and edgy and need to have a different voice and a different approach to it. Uh, and that's okay. And that can be extremely successful, but finding that lane that, that works for them in this area is so important.